Crazy. Well, welcome back, everyone, to Get the Net. Um, thanks for tuning in. We got Jeff Gustafson in house tonight. And I know you're probably wondering, like, all oh, you know, there's lots of options for guests. Gussie was just on, like, episode number four. We're back to 15, and uh, he's got too many damn good stories to just keep bottled up. So uh, I didn't even know we were happening already. I thought we were just having a buddy talk there, but it's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got to try and keep my language tight, you know, a little bit, but. Yeah. Hopefully there wasn't there was wasn't too many f bombs right off the hop there. Yeah, I'm not just gonna sail you down the river and put <laughs> something on that's gonna hurt you, bud. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, just got back from a killer trip, uh, best fishing trip I've ever been on, over to Australia, kind of once in a lifetime um, thing, and uh, it was amazing. It was like the the flight sucks. Um, she's a long haul. It's like 15 hours and 50 minutes on the way there. And then like 14 something on the way back. And you know, like we're not getting the business class or the, or the pot. Pots. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, uh, they're like, they're like 15 grand. If you buy them like straight up, like in advance. And then at the last minute they send you messages like, Oh, do you want it? You know, do you want a pod? They're on sale now and you can pay an extra like 2,500 bucks and get in one. But you're in peasant class oh yeah you're just like this for you're just like this for the for the whole way like barely can fit in there and on the way there i actually there was a girl sitting beside me and she gets on the plane and like is just hacking up along like right off the bat and i'm looking at shobs like are you freaking kidding me right now (laughs) and uh so then she does the like oh i got a lung problem it's i don't have covid i promise and like okay but like the whole way so i'm just kind of like Shelves is here, and I'm just kind of sitting like this the whole way, and this girl's just like hacking and coughing the whole time, like it was p- kind of painful. But uh, yeah, no issues. So. <laughs> That's a hump on a plane. Yeah, yeah. but you, yeah, the plane ride's tough. But like, yeah, once we got there, um, and, you know, no, no complaints. It was, it was pretty sweet. So yeah, uh, lay it out for us, bro. Carl Jockamson. One of my best friends that I've made fishing is from Australia. He, I fish against him on the Elite Series. He, um, in the past, I've mentioned like if because he'd usually go back in the fall, um, you know, during the off season to see his family and 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 get home and stuff. And uh, obviously, the last few years hasn't gone back. And but we talked about it, and I just said like whenever you know someday when you go back, like Shelves and I want to go and go to Australia. Brian and Bree went over there. They they you know said they had a good, such a good time and yeah. anyone you talk to pretty much has nothing but good things to say. Um, so earlier in the summer, he sent, he called me up one day and asked if, if we wanted to go and, um, if I, if I wanted to fish in a couple tournaments over there. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, so, you know, he kind of lined it up and then this ABT tournament circuit, um, Australia, Australian bass tournaments, um, they run tournaments for a number of different species over there. Yeah. Um, and Barra Mundy, the Barra tour is one of them. And, uh, so Steve and Nicole from ABT, they kind of were instrumental in like getting a boat lined up for us to use. Steve let Carl borrow his truck for the whole, the whole trip. Um, and just kind of made it happy. Hum, uh, Hummingbird uh, rigged this boat up with all the, you know, all the stuff we needed. Um, and uh, so, because, I mean, it's not like boats aren't as easy to, especially like a good fishing boat, aren't as easy to get a hold of over there as they are here probably. So yeah, Carl was saying like, the, like no one's got talons on their boat because they're just like, they'd cost like 12 grand or something yeah like everything's more expensive like you know the boating stuff's expensive as it is and it's just that much harder to get a lot of the stuff over there so so yeah we were lucky we had a boat to use and and um and and so yeah we went um got there carl uh, we actually shelves and i spent two days in sydney you fly over we're in sydney and then uh it's like an hour flight we spent a couple days there that was it was cool to see like the opera house and like it's a it's a big city um a couple days of that i was good yeah. with the, <laughs> good with that you're not uh, gonna convince me that it, like, <laughs> no i mean it's like you know how it is it's cool to see different yeah, places like an yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then so, we, so we, it's like, it's like 12, 12 hour flight, flight to brisbane, to brisbane. Or, a tw- or a 12 it's a 12 hour drive an hour flight up to brisbane, brisbane. Okay. um and, and uh, uh met carl, met carl there um, um 
shelves, shelves and, I, and I and him and Kayla, Kayla and their baby, little baby uh, went, uh, went to, to the Australian, Australian zoo. zoo. So that was, so that was pretty, pretty sweet. Um, um, got to, got to you, know, you know see koala bears and kangaroos. We're feeding kangaroos with our hands. With our hands and, um, and, um, it's, actually it's actually Steve Irwin's zoo, zoo and his, his, family, his family runs it now. So it was. You can get, you can pretty, get close pretty close to the animals, animals touch, a touch a lot of them. Shelf's, Shelf's got, got a picture with the koala bear. bear. Uh, you know, you know so it's a little better than most zoos. They had big saltwater crocs and the, the, ten, the ten deadliest snakes. snakes. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they had all the good shit. Yeah, they had all the good stuff. They had all the good stuff. They had all the good stuff. They had all the Yeah, no, it was it was cool. So we did that. So we did that, and then pretty much that afternoon, Carl and I started driving, and we had about a 10 and a half, 11 hour drive. North to where, to where we actually fished. Fish. Um, so, um, it so it was like some serious, serious travel, travel the first few days. days. Um, um, he, I'm, he, I'm lucky he did all the driving. Uh, uh, you're, the steering, the steering wheels, wheels on the other, on the other side, side of the car, and, and you drive on the other side of the road. So like, yeah, dude, yeah, dude, you can barely drive, drive here. here. Yeah, yeah. never mind yeah. switching all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was would have been no good. And then Shelves, I'm gonna throw Shelves under the bus here. She rented a car for. She had a car when we were up there for about 10 days and uh we brought it back the last day we had it she rounded a corner and like curbed the two wheels so we turn it in you know the two wheels are scuffed and like anything to report no (laughs) and then we get on the plane ride to come home and she got an email like there were some scuffs on the car and we haven't got the bill yet for that but there are some discrepancies in your story yeah 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 Yeah. they they noticed they noticed the few scuffs on there but um, but anyway, yeah, we drive up there, uh, get get up to this this the first lake that we're gonna fish, and uh, they're all like small reservoirs. You know, the the first one was kind of the smallest one that we fished, maybe two kilometers by three kilometers, kind of a bowl. Okay. A few reefs and humps out in the middle of it. There's some. They all have some standing timber, um, and the guys call them dams. So the the first place was Kinchant Dam, and then uh, Timbra, and the last place was Faust Dam. So uh those are kind of like there's and then there's some other places that have barra um up there too but get up there um go get on the water at like three or four o'clock the first day and you know i've I've been getting the lowdown from carl kind of as we as we've been traveling like how it's gonna go uh it's hot like it's summer's kind of just starting there so it would be like plus 35 during the in the afternoons like hot and uh, so that's part of the reason, like all the fishing sessions, like the tournaments would be from 4 p.m. until midnight. So it's eight hours, but you're fishing. It would get dark at like seven o'clock and you'd fish from, you know, the, the last half of it in the dark. Yeah, and uh, that part's bananas. I didn't expect that. No, no I do. Um, well, I've just seen like I, I, I guess I wasn't really expecting and didn't ask about it. But I'm like looking at some of the photos and stuff. A lot of the photos of these things are in the dark and. We got up there, and what we found the first few days, we we could catch you know a fish or two during the daylight, and then as soon as it like would be starting to get dark, then you then like the bites would start happening, yeah. and uh, and so they yeah I think they have the tournaments late for two reasons to sort of avoid the heat of the day a little bit, and then also they bite better at night. So when you're out, out we had a good moon the whole time. Like the last night or two, it was like completely full, so it's pretty bright out on the water. You wear a headlamp and, you know, if you got a net of fish or retie, then you put the headlamp on. Uh, all the good teams, like, never, you don't see a headlamp come on unless it's, like, last second to net a fish. Because, like, little, if, like, spooky? No, but if you, if the headlamp's going off all the time, then, like, you know that the guys are catching fish or something's happening right, over right. there. You so. see it, like, the big waves and- and Carl was telling me, like, over the years, there's been, like, everyone was really friendly and helpful. Like, they wanted us to catch fish, and yeah. we got some help for sure. But, like, uh, Carl was telling me, like, there's been guys in the past that, like, bring shields to put up so, like, people can't see the lights and stuff. Or the You don't really have camera flashes as much now because of the iPhones. And if you have a headlamp, then you don't really get a right. flash. Right. But, like, if you start seeing flashes going off, like, oh, okay, they're catching fish over there. Yeah, I guess if the lakes are only a couple square miles. Yeah, I didn't see, realize that. you gotta, you got to have your lights on, obviously. That's one of the rules. Yeah. And it was getting kind of lax. Like, uh, everyone has the red and re- red and green front lights on. But, like, I'm in the back most of the time. And the, the light's, like, right at your eye level, like the nav light. Okay. So it's super annoying. So, like, I'd take it out sometimes. And 
whatever. And then, cause you'd see other people like Carl's like, Oh, we need to have that light. And I'm like, Oh, those guys don't have it in. Or those guys don't have it in. I'm like, okay. So, uh, but at the, the, after the first tournament that like a bunch of these guys didn't have it in, they said that the ne- if we catch anyone without their nav light in, you're getting disqualified. So yeah, then you had to sure leave it in, but you could put like a little, little bit of tape on that, that side that's sort of facing into the boat. So it wouldn't be as bright, but, huh. um, but other than that, I mean, no, nah, it was pretty, um, pretty, you get used to fishing it, it in the dark and it was fine. Um, the last, the first two lakes, we didn't fish around the timber a whole lot. So it was fine. Like you're not, you know, you could just let a rip where you're casting. But, uh, the last place we fished, we fished in the timber a little bit more. So you kind of had to, it was good to get on your spot, like before it got dark. So you could kind of know where you could n- know where the stuff was where, you, you know, so you weren't getting hung up. Yeah. So this bear tour is how many derbies is it? Uh, they had, I think they had seven events. So the angler of the year was the best five finishes from the seven events. So we got to fish four of them. So we didn't quite get to fish, get a fifth one in there, uh, which we wouldn't have won, but we, we actually did pretty good. There's about 40 teams per tournament. So we got a third, a sixth, the 18th and a sixth. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was pretty fun. Um, just like here, anywhere else, there's like a few teams that were, that shit were, kicking everyone yeah, that were, they yeah. had it, they had it dialed in you can and i mean it's so funny like you could it's a totally different species never met these people and you can tell like right away when you meet these guys who the yeah who the language is are. the same like yeah. it doesn't you know you see it like from bass tournaments to walleye tournaments so obviously it doesn't you change just tell, like the boats are rigged up like primo they got really good equipment um the one thing i will say the, the electronics these guys have on their boats blows away what we use over here. Like, like the amount of them or how they use the them? The amount, how they use them. And they all got big screens. Like you wouldn't, I, I don't, I maybe saw one or two 10 inch screens. Everyone's got 12s. Most of the guys are running 15 inch screens, like big screens. And then, uh, huh. yeah. I would have thought the opposite. Yeah. Small boats, a lot of small boats, like yeah. 17 foot boats, tillers. And I mean, we've all, that's fine. In the smaller lakes, like, there's a lot of advantages to fishing out yeah, of a tiller yeah. boat. Keeping the money out of the hull and out of the motor and, and onto the grass. And, I like but it. But, like, these 17-foot boats would have four, like, 15-inch screens on them, a lot of them. And then a lot of a lot of the guys are, like, and you do it, but they're running, um, you know, live sonar on the front and the back. A lot of them are running 360 on both at the front and at the back. These fish are big enough where um, – you can see them on 360 so that was kind of neat i'd never really used it for that as much yeah, but yeah. like a lot of these guys are actually the 360 is more important than like having live sonar for um and i'm going to talk about how you fish a little bit too because it, it, it would because a lot of people are hearing me say that and they're like oh there's no way that that could be that effective but yeah um and what i learned and, and i str- and i almost like struggled with carl the first few days was you don't you don't bounce around for these things like the, uh, one of the nights pre-fishing, we bounced a bunch of points and, and like pull up to a point, catch one, pull up to a point, the next one, catch one. It's kind of like how we fish here, you yeah. know, make five casts. You don't catch one onto the next one. Yeah. But um, what all these guys do over there, if you have a good spot, if there's a weed edge, um, a, a, you know, a bit of a stick out, whatever it is, um, these things are just on the move constantly. So if you find a good spot and, and what a lot of the good spots would be was like, they have hydrilla in these lakes. So if the hydrilla came out to a point and sort of forced them to swim around it, yeah. you just keep casting and casting and casting at the same spot. Yeah, and want to swim through. yeah. And, but what would happen is you, you, so you could, your three sixties running all the time and you can see them coming. Like it's clear as day. Um, Carl actually got some good video and photos of it that you can, where you can see it, but, um, you know, he'd be like, oh yeah, there's three of them coming right now. And so many times, like he'd say that, then one of us would get hooked up and you'd get little bite windows where you'd catch two or three, and then you'd go maybe a half an hour without, without getting a bite. But if it was a good spot, like more would be coming. And, uh, that was kind of, that was the different, like sort of program fishing wise, yeah. Uh, but that's where, yeah, that's where the 360 was cr- pretty cool. But I didn't realize they were that like, adv- I mean, you would just assume that the most advanced would be in the, in the U S or Japan. It's yeah, no, crazy. these guys really, uh, were big on electronics and, and knew how to use them. And, um, yeah, it was pretty impressive. And then, 
Um, the other thing, like just we'll, we'll get off the electronics after this, but the other thing a lot of the guys were doing um, was putting the live sonar in the landscape mode and catching suspended fish, which this is a, what I've sort of understood or learned was this is a new thing over there in the last couple of years. A lot of these bear are suspended during the day. At night, it kind of goes away, but during the day, out in the middle of the lake, and it could be over 50, 60, 70 feet of water, they're five or 10 feet down, and they're catching them on little jerk baits. And right. you can see them. Um, if you put it, it, these things move so much and so fast, you can't really, if you're just in like forward mode, you can't stay on them and see your bait and everything like it's it's and again if you haven't used it i hadn't it's hard to believe that like i'm like no i'll I'll be able to stay on them but i jumped in the boat with steve the the guy that runs the tournaments and he actually won the first tournament at this kitchen he's the hammer hammer on this forward landscape sonar mode um but I got in the boat with him, and within, like, five minutes, I had my bait in front of a fish. And I got, a like, a drive-by, didn't hook it. But yeah. it was just – it was so impressive to see. Um, yeah, and he had some really cool videos of, of what he was doing on, on the that ABT website is, or on their Facebook page as well if people wanted to check it out. But, um, but I could see, like, bringing that over here for suspended fish, bass, musk, whatever it is. Um, Cause you kind of like you, you can't really fish deeper than it. like ten or twelve feet right. with that thing, or right. I don't know how like the science. Like I'm sure the further out you are, the deeper it goes. Yeah. But it sounds like in that like eighty foot range, and, eighty feet out is kind of like yeah. twelve foot. That's what he's running it like eighty feet out, and uh, so he's out. He likes to stay deep enough where he's not picking up the bottom with it, because if you can see the bottom, you start. It just becomes a lot harder to actually see the fish and okay. see your bait. Your bait's okay. pretty small, but he could see his little jerk bait on there, and. Uh, but these bear, I mean, they're big, so they're, you know, and you can see them, and they're, I mean, the most powerful, um, aggressive fish, but then it was crazy how, like, how much finesse you had to have a lot of times to actually get a bite, like, seeing them, watching them come up to these, they're using little two-banger, small diving jerk baits, and, um, I mean, if you twitched one, and one was looking at it, and you twitched it, like, it was, it would be just gone, like, see It was a straight reel or a pause? It, it was more like if you saw one, he'd cast past them and then just slowly reel it up to tr- and try to lead them, get the bait in front of them. If you mm-hmm. sneak it up behind him, they, that spooks him. Um, he's got this dialed in, and he won the tur- I mean, he made it yeah, look yeah. easy. Yeah, um, and uh, he reels up, reels the bait slow, and when you get to the fish, it's just like you hold it there and you maybe just give it a little shake, a little twitch, and uh, if they decide to bite it, it'll be this far into their throat and you set the hook and they're already like five feet in the air it's unbelievable yeah you said they're trash in your gear pretty hard too so we caught a lot of ours on swim baits big swim baits um and uh yeah like so it would it had a big top hook which you could almost cut those off carl like the what that's the other thing too like if you just use one single hook that's what we want to hook everything on here that's what we, we yeah. use yeah. these things will put the bait in and out of their mouth so fast that you uh you, you have to have a dangling treble hook why are they so on. like picky do they get beat up or they, uh, i mean they're smaller nature? places they get fish but i think it's just kind of their nature okay and i mean i had bites where i'm reeling the swim bait along and i'm like some of the bites would just be like the the hardest punch yeah, you ever yeah, had yeah. in the arm. I mean, just like whack and you're hooked up. And then other times, like I'd be reeling it. I'm like, mm, I think I had a bite there, but you didn't even like check it or anything. Just keep reeling. Then you get it in and they have teeth like bass. Like they don't, they don't have like sharp teeth. You yeah. can lip them and everything. But like we got, we got bit off like not every night, but like every other night. And we, we were using 80 pound floral leaders at first and we ended up going to a hundred at the end and, like with crimps and swivels, like that stuff. Like no, just were... tying an FG knot to like forty pound braid onto and... the onto that heavy floral. Yeah. Wow, that's shocking! You can do that. Yeah, you can. Oh. Um, he, they, Carl had a different way of finishing it. It's a little more finishing to it than okay. what we're doing. But okay. uh, yeah, FG knot and then a loop knot, just tying a, like a rappel knot to yeah. the to the baits and. Uh, but yeah, I, I, we had some, but like chew us off and what would happen is their jaws are just so powerful. You would, um, if they came up and you got like, it's fun seeing them jump, but then like in the tournaments, it's like, okay, that one jumps fine. <laughs> Cause they'll come up and they just like rub that line enough on their, yeah. on their sandpaper and they can break it. But, um, yeah, we, the first couple nights, I mean, we had, them. Um, 
um, ripping the wires out of the back of the swim baits, like opening it up the crimps and losing the whole treble hook and everything. We had split rings getting opened, Carnage. jacking your hooks. Like if you hooked one on just like the one, like, you know, whatever the heaviest jig heads we use around here, like yeah. one single hook, like they would just bend those open like nothing. No we had the drags locked as tight as you can and like they would just pull it like no we're problem. using like big flipping sticks too yeah pretty much yeah. yeah like heavy bass tackle yeah um you could use heavier stuff a lot of the local like uh one team over there that won a couple the one one of them finished second these were like pretty cool guys and i got a funny they're like our age i got a funny yeah. story for, from one of yeah, them but like they were using uh like 5000 series spinning rods yeah like or spinning surf, reels surf casters. yeah just like uh um but they're using like stellas like they have the high end they all have high end stuff like if you used a hundred dollar reel like these things would just destroy it in yeah. one night like yeah. you'd catch like three and the reel would be shot <laughs> so um but like yeah just like a heavy bass rods kind of because you you know you're casting and stuff like if you use too heavy it's just i don't know you, it would just wouldn't be as efficient and yeah, yeah. and whatnot but um but yeah, like the, it was so fun, the fishing. And uh, the, the first night we were there, Carl caught three, I caught one and we missed a few other bites. We kind of fished around a couple of his buddies. And uh, the next night we went out and we kind of started doing our own, own thing. They just came out with those uh, Lake Master, the new cards over there too, that we've got here, these VX cards with a lot yeah. more uh, stuff. So we had actually a card for these lakes, which most of the guys didn't like Carl said his whole life, he never had any good maps for these lakes. And, and so we had a map. So we were able to like, you know, find some structure that maybe hadn't been fished that much before. So the yeah. second night we're out on this Kinchin dam and, uh, we probably, we got on a spot where there were just like, he threw the trolling motor in and like, he's like, they're all around us. And it was a little bit before dark and we, he finally catches one. And then as soon as like it got dark, it was just like, insane for three hours in like the derby or no this was like our last night day pre-fishing on this place yeah how many days were you pre-fishing we before? did two days two we, we got there we got four days to practice two on kinchin two on timbra and then the the tournaments were like friday night on timbra saturday night on kinchin okay let's switch her up then yeah and then uh and then sunday we drove up to this faust place and we got one night there and then the they had an all-nighter on monday so I'll get to this. This is a this was a shit show. It was from 4 p.m. until 8 a.m. That's so it's a 16 hour tournament that. through the that. night. Ashley saw that too. She's like, "Do you think Gussie's even having fun over there?" I was like, "Call." Well, probably. I'll get to that. Like I'm like Carl's like. Uh, we're, well, they give us sleeping. They gave us sleeping bags. Like Steve gave us some sleeping bags for the boat. He's like, "Yeah, you'll have to have a nap at some point." And I'm like, "Nah, sh- <laughs> screw that." I'm like, "I'll fish for the. I'll just fish through." You know. You yeah, so we got them. some sleeping bags anyway. that he gave us, and, and I'm like, leading up to that, I'm like, no, nah, I'll just fish all night. Like, I can handle it. We slept a little bit during the day, the day before, and yeah. uh, no. And we and that was actually the toughest kind of session that we had. We got to that lake, and we got one. We only got one day to practice there, and it was like 30-mile-an-hour wind, so it was brutal windy. Um, yeah. Just made it hard to, like, learn a lot about that lake and, like, idle around and – um we kind of went into that tournament. We found we caught a few the night pre-fishing and found some points that had fish on them. And it ended up being pretty busy in that little section when the tournament actually rolled around. The wind just blew there the whole four or five days that we were there. So um, we went to the to the zone that we you know thought was pretty decent, and there was boats sort of on everything. So we got we got on one spot, um, caught a couple uh missed one or two marked a you know saw a bunch they just weren't it was like it was a spot they were just kind of moving past they weren't really hanging around on i don't know and uh and then it gets to like middle of the night and we're uh finally at like 1 a.m carl's like i'm i'm going down i gotta take a break and so i'm like okay so i fished for another hour or so and i'm just now this well yeah i'm wondering who was more nuts you or him for like the grind yeah, no, I kept her going, and then we, we just had gotten in an area out of the wind, sort of, and it just felt like there was no fish around, you know? We were in some timber a little bit, and I fished around, and then I'm like, oh, man, I better have a little nap, too. So I just laid down and then uh, woke up at, like, 4.30. The sun, it was just starting to get a little light coming from the sun, so I kicked Carl. I was across the seat, and then he was right behind the seats. Um, I just... It, it's it's pretty warm so like i had a hoodie and i used another hoodie for a um 
for a pillow, had my Sims bibs on, and that was what I slept in. And um, woke up, and I'm like, okay, let's go. We got to catch some fish because we only had two at that point. We got till 8 a.m. to catch limit. five, five fish limits. So uh, we started fishing, and then I caught one pretty – pretty quick after off a of late we just went we were kind of like and this was this was what sort of hurt us at this place was he'd fished there eight or ten years ago and caught or maybe i don't know five years ago a while ago and caught some um in this one area up shallow um and the wind was kind of blown in there like there, a lot of things seemed right but uh talking to some of the guys after some of this water was just too shallow and they're out a little farther but we were going around just casting it like lay downs now with these swim baits and I caught one and then he finally caught one. And then at like 720, we got, he got our fifth one. It was just a little 60 centimeter, like a baby kind of, but yeah. that was the one that we finished 18th. And we just never got on a real good spot. The all night or the locals whipped you in the all night. Yeah, they whipped our butt. And, uh, we, there was, there was two guys that, that we'd met earlier in the week, um, Pete and Benny, and they, they ended up winning the all nighter and, and we started the evening near them. And then we sort of finished near them. We, we went by and I, I yelled at them, you know, you guys got, you guys catch your five. And they're like, yeah, they failed to mention they were all huge ones, but yeah, yeah, sandbag. yeah, but, um, but yeah, these guys were, were two of my favorite people that I met over there. And, um, the, uh, Pete, one of the guys, like they're both, they're, they're around our age probably, but like yeah. big, big boys, like you wouldn't want to mess with either of them. Yeah. And, uh, Pete's it's telling me the story after the next day, we, uh, we were just hanging out, having lunch and he's like, yeah, I went to Canada one time. I'm like, oh yeah. And he's telling me, yeah, we went to Banff and Vancouver and Toronto and Montreal. Like it's he did like the whole, mix. yeah, he said they were chasing women. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so he tells the story and it's go, it's pretty funny. And then he said, "Yeah, um, when I was in Montreal, we were at this place called Pizza Pizza, like after the bar one night." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, that sounds like I've been there, you know." <laughs> and uh, he he's you like, "Overtime after the bar, like yeah. going to Pizza Pizza, still yeah. on the still yeah. on the honey hunt." Or uh, I don't know. I didn't I didn't ask, the, but this okay. uh, the story is pretty good. So he's he's like, "Yeah, this guy." I, I got in a fight at Pizza Pizza and I'm like, well, really? And he's like, yeah, um, I'm in line and this guy that I can't hardly understand him talk to me. He's telling me that he's got a friend that lives in Perth and Perth's on the south side of Australia. And I'm like, no, nah, Perth's on the west side of Australia. And uh, the guy's like, no, it's on the south side. My friend lives there. And he's like, bro, I live there. And he's got a full Australian accent. Like you don't argue with someone from Australia where like the cities are, you know? Yeah. And uh, so he said they, this went on for a few minutes and this guy's pissing him off and he gets up to the pizza and there's four pieces left. So he just bought, he's like, so I bought all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so then the guy was pissed. They're like, okay, we're shutting her down. So I took all my pizza, went outside and I walk out the door and I get slapped in the back of the head. And, uh, and then he just finished the story by saying, guaranteed that guy knows where Perth is now. <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny, like, yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's a quality story. Yeah, this guy sounds like a beauty. They're all beauties, yeah. Um, you know, you like- you finish fishing at midnight, like, and uh, you know, every, the first week we stayed with like eight. There was four teams, sort of all staying together. So there's eight of us, so we'd have a few beers and we yeah. get back, tell stories. Everyone loses fish, so like, there's always good fish loss stories right. and stuff. Right. Um. You pretty much got to hook eight or ten to land five, generally. Like, they just go nuts, like, between the jumping and the braking equipment. Does, like do, do, like, most people get their limit, too? Or um, it it's not as easy as you would think. We got our limit every session except the last one. We only got four. Okay. And we we did lose a couple. Um, but, uh, no, it, it, I don't know. Probably on – like – that Kinchin place, that seemed to have the most fish. Probably 20 of the 40 teams got their limit there. But otherwise, maybe like probably 10 teams per session got their limit. Maybe a few – the all-nighter, I think, probably a few more did too. It's crazy that it's five, like on fish that yeah. big and that hard to catch. But that's cool. Like the best way I could describe them, and I've told a few people this, is like they're not as big as like a muskie. Um, most of them, like a big one was 100 centimeters. They get up to like 130. I think the biggest ones that were like the, there's big fish prizes at every session and they'd yeah. be like a 112, 
110, 112. So 100 centimeters is like. 100 centimeters inches, was right? like uh, 40 you know, inches? Yeah, 40 inches. Because 90 centimeters is 36 inches. Yeah. So yeah, okay, right in that neighborhood. Like forty inches. That's a big freaking critter. They're like twenty pound fish. Like most, like the ninety somethings are twenty pound fish. I would okay. estimate. Okay. Um, but you start getting up like over a hundred, and they just start to get like Deep. they get like different pretty quick. Yeah. Um, the one night pre fish and Carl caught two one o nines, and I got a one o four. That was the biggest one I got. I caught a couple other like one o twos, one o one. Yeah. Um, but. Big critter. Yeah, but um, those boys that won that all nighter, they had like a limit of over 105s up to 112 or 113 or something. Like they had all Kongs. It was pretty impressive. And like, um, I saw them catch one of them like early, like early in the afternoon on in that one. We were fishing not that far away from, them, and I saw them catch one. And I saw them. I just happened to look out and like I saw them hook it, and it jumped way out there. And then all like fast, the thing was jumping by the boat, and they got it. So the next day, I'm like, I seen you hook that first, and I'm like, you got real lucky. Like, he just swam right at the boat, hey? And he's like, no, nah, I skull-dragged his ass. <laughs> These are the guys using the, like, 5,000 Stellas and, like, oh, yeah, just drag locked and just winch them in, yeah. Because you're around trees and stuff. Like, you kind of got to – but that was pretty funny. Like, I'd never heard that term before. Skull-dragged. Yeah. Huh. That seems like something one of your Florida buddies would say. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, these guys would fit right in with with everybody. yeah bring them over you yeah. said one was like a was gonna fish the opens or something was that so that's another kid uh tommy wood so they ended up winning the last tournament which was a two-day two event yeah. um and he fished with a guy josh lowry who owns a tackle company over there um called samiki lures samaki um so it makes a lot of cool really cool tackle i brought a few baits over that i think will work over here but nice. Um, but th- we stayed with them the first week and, uh, got to, you know, kind of hit it off with them. But Tommy's won a bunch of stuff. He's 24, um, has the bug. He's going to come over to the classic this year and sort of check it out. And then is nice. you know, he's saving his money and planning to come over and like start fishing the opens. And I mean, it's, it's hard enough for us to do it from Canada. And, you know, he's got a tall order coming from Australia to, you know, you need to find a boat and truck. Um, the expenses are are heavy um but he's he's uh he you know he's got he's definitely got like the fishing part will be easy for him probably yeah Um, yeah and i mean it as hard as it is like from there at least someone's already paved the way yeah like uh, like how you did from here like it does make it a lot easier like you know while while you've been going like when i talked to you on the phone i was like frick but i missed you like i you know had some big decisions to make and and had a lot of questions and, you know, how do you do this and how do you do that? And like, uh, you know, being able to lean on you. So at least he's got Carl like in that same regard. So, yeah. um, you know, it's still going to be freaking hard, but that's, uh, that's pretty cool. We might see another Aussie. In yeah. The game. And like, yeah, great guy. And, uh, you know, so yeah, I, I think he'll, uh, you know, if he, if he, if he wants it bad enough, I'm sure he'll probably be able to, to make it happen. And, um, so but the, he was another guy that, you know, we, he helped us out, gave us a few pointers and tips. And yeah. I mean, most of these guys were like pretty cool. Like they're, they wanted us to catch fish. Like they had a spot, they ended up winning this last tournament and they had a really good spot and, and had said, cause we kind of had a toughie in that all nighter and the two day one was on the same body of water. And they were like, yeah, we got a spot. There's a lot of fish. You can come, you know, tie up to a tree down from us and you can, um, catch some fish but um we ended up sort of doing our own thing a little bit and uh but yeah he's he he actually posted some pretty cool videos on his social media yeah i told you i started following him yeah okay. i was looking at his stuff because you're like yeah they're doing this uh landscape or perspective mode and i was like yeah i already saw it on his instagram yeah. <laughs> so like if if you anyone wants to see like how these fish jump and like how when they're fighting like it's nuts it's he's got some pretty good clips and they were like they were sitting like that's a small lake and you could like i don't know if you saw the video of like their boat was filling up with water like they were taking them over the bow like just pretty much they tied to a tree and they were on a good little little hump and uh yeah like they just sort of took it out there and yeah man like carl here you know when you see him on live when he hooks like a two pound bass he free like go on go on yeah like those things he must lose yeah, his he was, mind yeah he was getting fired up it was pretty cool yeah he'd get you'd know when he hooked one up like 
Because you probably haven't spent much time in the boat with them. As much as you travel with them, it's not like you guys are practicing together no. or fishing tournaments together no. or anything. No, uh, we we fished together a few times, but yeah, it was uh, yeah he it was it was cool. He'd get excited. Um, and I mean, he's posted. He had GoPros running a lot of the time, so he yeah was, yeah I saw a little bit of it. That's why I was like, oh man, one, that boy's one fired up. That, uh, uh, in the last day or two of one that we lost in that first tournament that we did, we finished third and we actually lost two in that one that were big, like legit big ones that we probably could have been close to winning it. But, um, I mean, that's just the way it is. You're not going to land all of them, but he, uh, he did some good editing on that video clip because there was quite a few F bombs and things happening. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He should have enough pull by now where he can just play that. (laughs) Is he like, he must be the King Todd over there. He's got a good following over there. And yeah, I mean, a lot of these guys and it just, I mean, it sort of shows the power that Bassmaster has, or, you know, these guys all watch Bass live and, and, yeah. uh, they, they know what's going on with, you know, they follow it. And yeah. it's, so it's pretty cool, but yeah, he's, he's got a big following over there. And, um, to put it in perspective, like he hasn't fished over there in like 10 years and he's still the all time, like money winner for like these this abt circ trail yeah yeah like one the angler of the year stuff one bunch of tournaments and uh so yeah i mean he was just you know like like anywhere you better be able to um run the show kind of be very competitive in your home area if you think you're gonna like go out on the the big stage or national tours and like (laughs) think you're yeah. gonna go beat like palinock and fighter and these guys that are legit you know yeah yeah so. well and especially when you're like when you know when you come from here you you damn sure better now fishing and you know yeah but i mean to go from over there like yeah if, you, if you're if you're no no good and you show up like that's that's could be like a life ruiner yeah. <laughs> like that's a big commitment yeah so yeah no so i was lucky i mean carl knew what we were what we were what to do and um you know we were we were catching fish pretty quick when we got out there yeah what uh like these guys that fish it all they're just like like blue collar guys and this is like their big thing for the year yeah and it was pretty cool because i don't know that necessarily all the events are that close together all the time they had a couple back in september and a couple earlier in october right you mentioned you did four out of seven yeah so um so it yeah, does kind of go all year then, or yeah. just the fall? Yeah, it's kind of the fall. Um, next year, I know they're having this this two-day Faust event, like the all-nighter and the two-day one yeah. uh, at the end of no- last weekend in November. So, I mean, if it works out again and I can go back, like I for sure would. It was so fun and, um, like, yeah, it was gr- the fishing was incredible. Like, anyone wants to do a bucket list trip, uh it's yeah it would be you'd have a blast fishing for these things there's not there's a few guys people that guide over there um you know it's not it's not like there's resorts everywhere where you can go do it at yeah yeah there are places um farther north like they're actually bear are saltwater fish and they put them in these reservoirs and they actually get a lot of them get bigger in the reservoirs surprisingly just because i think they don't have to fight current and be on the move all the time there's lots of bait um, but you can go, there's places, you, resorts you can go to where they have them on some of these saltwater rivers and, uh, and the fishing's like really good and, you know, it'd be, it'd be a fun way to do it too. I love tournament fishing, obviously. So it, you know, if I went back, I'd, I'd hate missing, not getting to do the tournament stuff, but there's a lot of good places to fish there for sure. Right. You stuck around after for a couple of days. And, and then, yeah, we, we were near a little town called Airlie Beach. So it's kind of the heart of the Great Barrier Reef. Um, and, uh, a Whit Sunday Island. So that's a pretty famous part of Australia. A lot of movies get filmed there. Um, so Shelves and I stayed there for a few days after the morning we left, we actually did a fly over the Great Barrier Reef. So that was like pretty cool. And nice. And just, you know, go back, you got to go out and fish out there. It's pr- one of the best places to fish in the world. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, just, it was a, it was an awesome trip. Really good food. Um sick like super good coffee like the coffee we have in north america is just garbage compared to the coffee you get over there oh man yeah. that the the first night i met carl we were at some restaurant and we were in florida yeah, and he yeah. was just looking at like 
he was talking about the food in Australia and it was like a pretty good rep. Like we were in a pretty good zone, like one of the better places I've eaten in the U S yeah. probably. And he's just like, mate, like, yeah, <laughs> this is uncultured garbage. <laughs> yeah. No, the coffee's all like, they make it all with, like espresso machines and like every coffee's foamy and like, she's all under pressure. Yeah, like I never saw one like drip coffee pot. Like we do make coffee. Yeah. You ain't just stuffing a bunch of Maxwell house into yeah, a black and decker. No. Oof. Yeah, I'm a I'm a, like a bit of a coffee snob too, and so are you. So yeah. Yeah, for you to say that it's garbage here is that's a like every gas station they had the they had a coffee pro coffee machine behind the till, and you get the guy to make it for you. Like you don't just go and like make a coffee, like pour a coffee. Right. Um, they're all like it's like five bucks for a coffee everywhere, so you pay. What's like more. what's the currency? Like wh- how does that work? Uh, their dollars worth like a little bit less than the Canadian dollar, so pretty much like same as Canadian. Okay. Dollar. So stuff's a little bit more expensive on. Average, yeah, I mean but, Starbucks costs that. Yeah. Whatever. No, yeah. No, in general, um, yeah. If you went like for U.S. people, it would be you, the U.S. dollar is worth quite a bit more right now, so it's, they you know stuff wouldn't be that bad, but. Yeah. Huh. Man, that's wild. That's yeah. a <laughs> that's a crazy trip. Yeah. Was there uh was there like a good party after uh, uh, after every one or like after the last okay, one? Okay, so uh after no, after every session like you you know, you get in at midnight so you're kind of jacked up but like it's fairly late. Yeah, um, you got So we'd have a few rest. beers for sure every night with okay. a few of the guys and then What were you staying in? So the first for the first week we were in a Airbnb with with four other teams um and uh that was for the first two events and then when we drove up to this Faust dam uh we actually stayed at like a it'd be like a place where they do kids summer camp so it was a bunch of almost like little portable units and be, real bare bones two beds and a fridge yeah and a light pretty much was all you had um and then like a big kitchen cafeteria area where you we go for meals okay um, so that was fun it wasn't as nice yeah, but it was fine. Like we're there to fish. It was cool because like pretty much all the teams stayed there, so everyone was all like in the same place. So that was uh, after the all nighter session. Everyone gets back and you're get you're getting in at eight in the morning and um, you know everyone's gas. Like I I know those boys that won. They stayed up all night. They said, but they were like had an epic night of just catching fish. Um, but you, tr- you know, everyone kind of slept for a few hours till lunchtime or whatever. And then, uh, they have, a, they had their kind of year end banquet party that night, the Tuesday night. And then Wednesday and Thursday was the like last two day session. So Tuesday night was the, we didn't fish and, uh, they had a big party and that was, that was like so fun. Like, um, they gave out a bunch of awards and, and stuff from some of the tournaments and just, it was just kind of a, you know, just a year. I wish we did more of that with our tournaments here. Like it was, uh, it was pretty, pretty cool. It probably started at six o'clock and went till nine thirty or 10. It was yeah. good. Cause like we had the all nighter before. So like that kind of stopped people from like, going yeah, full yeah, range, yeah. you know, like you by 10 o'clock, like everyone was getting, getting pretty tired. So, yeah. uh, but yeah, fun, fun. Just like I said, a really cool, cool group of uh, of people and and guys. Um, you know, it was fun. Made some good friends. Yeah. Oh man, that's sweet. I didn't re- like. Yeah, I didn't like. I didn't realize how good of a time you had down there. And I talked to you on the phone a little bit the other day, and like, yeah, you had all these stories, and I was like, oh shit, this was like, this was the trip. Yeah, it really it was literally the best trip I've ever been on, like fishing trip or any kind. And of you've trip. been everywhere. You've been bass fishing in Mexico. You've yeah, been, I've been you lucky, know, gone lots of good fishing trips, but like just the fish were cool, and then yeah, the people were really cool, and um, yeah, it was it was just a, a good place to go, and um, I would definitely. I mean, it's a project to go there. It's yeah, it's not cheap, but. Um, yeah, I definitely, at some point I'll definitely go back there for sure and made, made some friends. So like I'd have some people to fish with and hang out with a little bit, I think, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, it was, it was, it was a good time. Did, uh, is Carl still down there? Like he stayed there? He's there still. Uh, I think he's, he's going to be back sometime this week. He stayed another, uh, he had, uh, some, a lot of his sponsorship actually comes from these companies in Australia. So he was there nice. filming stuff for Shimano and Rapala and, uh after we got done 
Um, and then I think they, him and Kayla and River were doing a, a week or so of just kind of late vacation. And he spent a week with his family when, when before we got there. So he was a little over a month, I guess, being there. Yeah. Huh. Sweet. That sounds like a sweet place to return to. Yeah, no, for sure. Like I, I, uh, literally other than the flight like for sucks him. to get there, but other than that, um, you know, I, nothing to, nothing bad to say. It was a, it was a good, good time. Yeah. Now you're back in full, full, full winter. winter. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It's kind of nice to have a little downtime here and get, you know, we got, got a little bit of time off and then it, you know, you start thinking about the fishing season again coming up. So does yeah. everyone know like what you're up to yet? Yeah, I said on the last one that I was going to the Opens. Okay. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah, everyone knows except for Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't listen to this shit. <laughs> no, she knows. I'll go tell her for you right now. Yeah, she knows. She's coming to St. Lawrence. I think I'm trying to get her in as a co angler, but Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be a good one to go to. Yeah, that's what I said. And then at least she can fish with me when she wants. But you, she can give her the hair jig and <laughs> let her go with some guy that doesn't have one. He'll be so sorry. Yeah, yeah, he'll be backboating her after a couple. She's yeah. whipped my ass enough on that thing. Um, but yeah, no, a couple of people are jumping on, like, because I pretty much essentially need uh, some travel buddies and. Yeah, yeah, and I know, you know, I went with you back in the day, and uh, the first one I went to, I probably drove four hours the whole time, like, just totally neglected that, but, like, there's a couple that are just two weeks apart, and I have to come back for work, so I've been, like, the, the co-anglers have kind of been jumping out some buddies, so it's been good on that front. Who do you got lined up for that? Uh, Woody, Cody nice. Wood's going to come again, again. Yeah. yeah, so, like, yeah, he, he's easy to roll with. Yeah, just so funny. Like when he falls asleep, he snores like the worst you've ever heard. Like water buffalo, absolutely uncontrollable. Um, but the whole time he's awake, he's a beauty. Frosty, I think, is going to come to one. Cool. I don't know if he's cleared that with his family yet, but they're not going to listen to this. Yeah. And uh, who else? There's uh, uh, another cat from manitoba who's thinking about it and a couple guys from minnesota they're thinking about it so and then ashley so cool yeah yeah bud makes the the travel a little easier and it's good to have someone in the boat it's good to have a second line in the boat pre-fishing if you can yeah dudley used to put like six guys in his boat in the (laughs) flw days remember that yeah i can remember seeing him with a couple people in there i i mean i i one time i had daryl galusha and scott walsh friend from minnesota yeah yeah smith lake with me and Daryl actually fished four events one season, um, so he, he practiced with me. And, you know, my FLW, my dad used to come to, you know, one or two every year. So that yeah. was, that's the one thing I miss kind of from FLW was, like... Having a buddy in the boat or a family let, member. Like, yeah, you ha- it had to be a family member or someone signed up as a co-angler. Um, but, uh, yeah, that so Bassmaster, we're not allowed to have anybody in the boat with us for practice. Yeah. Um, Unless it's like a media person that then they're not allowed to fish, but yeah. And I mean, you guys are only practicing for two and a half days yeah, at it's, least. It's, it is what it is. It's fine, but yeah. But if you can have, you know, yeah, it makes it, it makes it, uh, a lot better. And I mean, you're going to have a bad tournament at some point and like, it's good to have a buddy to like, just take your mind off it when you go home, you know? Right. The ride home from those ones sucks. Yeah. I've been there many times. Yeah, I know it's common. I well I've had it like when we went to me and Jimmy went to Arkansas yeah. with you and like that yeah. was only a seventeen hour ride home, but we had like three fish between the two of us on the <laughs> co angler side for four days of tournament fishing. But yeah. that's a little bit different. Yeah, you that's guys just... didn't have the best best anglers to draw it out with. I had uh I had Austin Felix the first day, uh he he had a target of seven and a half pounds of betters <laughs> lined up. Uh, so that was fun. Got to watch him bed fish. And this, the next day I went with uh, Mr. S- yeah, Swamp People. Yeah. An alligator hunter from the show Swamp People, T-Roy Broussard, absolute beauty. Yeah, he Just was wasn't good. on any fish, but we had a damn good time. Yeah. My dad got with Gary Yamamoto one day. Oh, dude, yeah. yeah. Hang yeah. on, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Still got that pack? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's way deep. I'll pull it out. It's yeah, it. so my dad got to fish with um, with Gary Yamamoto. He's, I think he's still, up until last year, was still fishing the FLW Tour. And uh, 
they got him to sign some packs of Sankos, so pretty funny story. <laughs> Pretty deadly. Yeah. Yeah, this was in uh, 2016. Uh, Beaver Lake. Jimmy's like, hi, Drew, Gary Yamamoto. It's like, <laughs> you get him to sign these worms and you do it now, Bubba. Yeah. <laughs> so I got I got one for me and one for my bass and for box partner. This is, uh, you know, pretty automatic bait and suit arrows. It always has been, always will be. So I I've got the sign. it's actually the number one selling worm of all time, like, yeah, Gary doesn't need any promo, but no, yeah, he signed it's the pack. Not a promo, I mean, it's just we've all everyone's used one. But. These things are so old; they're probably like half melted in here by <laughs> now. But I always say, like, if I, you know, one day I'm gonna reach for them and dance with who brung you. Jesus, they were still eight eighty nine back then. Yeah, looks like a Zeps. Zeps, yeah. Sticker. Sticker. Yeah, he was the head of the curb. <laughs> yeah, what's uh? I haven't even looked at the Bassmaster schedule. I've been pretty selfish on that front. Uh, I know you guys are starting on Okeechobee, but I don't know when. Uh, like middle of February. We go, uh, I don't even know okay. the exact date. I know, uh, I know I'm know. i going to target time to leave Canada pro maybe. Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, between like January 20th and 25th, somewhere in there. I like to get, by then I'm kind of ready to roll. Um, like to get down to Florida and get a little fishing in you know i'll have the new lund and you know there's yeah. always some kinks to work out just get yeah i get a feel for everything. it work everything in and it's um super fun fishing in florida like uh i, I love getting down there and um there's a lot of uh, i don't love tournament fishing down there um, yeah but like just fun fishing there's a lot of small lakes you can go go if you bring a boat down there and i mean this endless there's a lot of water there's a lot of places to fish so yeah you don't have to tell me i cherry picked twice um actually drove this time most of the way probably yeah. um the last time we went yeah, yeah and and just went instead of like signing up as a co-angler because you know he's doing the elite thing now but i would just like go down uh drive down and we'd just go to these little small florida lakes and just beat on them all. Yeah. like if you didn't catch one for an hour it was like huh yeah. <laughs> where you know i'm sure on okeechobee you're, there's probably going to be some times where you go four or five six hours without catching a bass yeah, it's hard it, to like it, explain it that good, to people around here florida is like it can the fishing can be if you find like a little 50 or 100 yard stretch where they're at it can be so easy but if you don't it's it's just like everything looks the same yeah um, it can be can be challenging so you you just you, if you can find the little hot zone where it's going down it's fun and you can usually catch them catch some big ones and um you know but i've had some good tournaments down there uh and yep. pl plenty of of uh suck bus tournaments down there too yeah i mean as much as i wanted to that a florida tournament to be on the schedule this winter to just go down there and everything it's like it's such a crap shoot like it's a tough way to start your season because, uh, you know, as bad as it is, it is to say, like luck can have a big factor and that can send you in the wrong direction right away. Yeah, for sure. But, for sure. I mean, you've been going down there, starting the season down there forever, so you know the deal by now. Yeah. No, I mean, in Okeechobee, I, I, it's been a, 2018 was the last time I was there. Um, I fished there for a day with Mike Richards last year. He, he spends the winter – has been the last year spends a good chunk of the winter down there um fishes it quite a bit and um it hadn't been that great uh we went out and had caught a few nice ones but fish caught a few but i i you know usually it kind of goes down in you know one of three or four little areas and um i've learned that much so that you know probably be much the same this time around yeah it's not like you're going to show up and get overwhelmed or anything no. like that no it, it it is what it is, and then we go right back at it the next week at uh, Lake Seminole. So that's on the Florida Georgia line up in the Panhandle. Yeah. It's actually the lake below Eufaula where you guys will be fishing the next week. Uh, so yeah, it's it's kind of two Florida style derbies to start out. Um, Chatterbait will probably be my best friend in those ones if I can you know find yeah. somewhere to make it happen with those. That'll that's my my plan going going into them but i mean you just never know a lot of it'll be if the weather's nice for a week it'll you know it could be full spawn at both places or it could be it could be cold and then you got to flip mats the whole time I mean, it's just you know yeah that you foul is scaring the shit out of me yeah <laughs> that seems like a 
difficult place to catch a limit and just a really scary place to open the season. Yeah, I've fished, <laughs> I've been there three times, and I I had one of my worst finishes ever. Uh, I, I remember you caught him on the popper there. Yeah, I almost I got a fifth there in one yeah. one time. All and lost some far. big ones. Yeah, I could have won. I actually had the fish that could have won that yeah, one. Yeah, that was that. early May because yeah. we were coming back from Sturgeon Bay watching it. We're streaming it on Rydeberg's phone. Got him like a $600 phone bill probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we were there in June of 2020. Um, yeah. And that was kind of an op- more of an offshore tournament. I think I finished 41st. Like I think I was the first one out of the – fish in the third day so it wasn't like a horrible tournament but um they caught them pretty good in that one there's a ton of brush piles there so i mean if those factor in it's it's how many can you find you know in a few days pre-fishing and figure out how to catch them but i haven't been there in the winter um but it's it's got lots of big fish in it um you know i think it'll you'll be you'll be fine Eh, whatever i'm not i'm not there's nine tournaments at yeah. least, you know, like you look at the FLW schedule and it's like six. And, man, a lot of those, like, um, this isn't fact. This is all just speculation and rumor. Um, but a lot of people are jamming out of that uh, Tackle Warehouse Invitational or Tackle Warehouse Tour, now known as the uh, MLF Invitationals. It's, it's the, the FLW Tour. Yeah. <laughs> she's the flw and it sounds like a pile of the boys are coming over they're uh you yeah, know they're kind of sick of being second second tier to the bpt uh the payout changed a lot to where you know if you're going to catch them in the opens you're going to catch them and it, you at least have the chance at going to the classic or the elites which is obviously the place you want to be these days yeah yeah um no i mean i, I I fished six years of that and I have nothing bad to say at all. Um, my experience was great, but just like no championship. That's a big hit. That makes it tough to like do it for a living. If you don't have that little bonus at the end of the year, you know? Um, so yeah, I I just, I know like quite a few of my friends are, are that I've talked to are sort of jumping ship. Um, and, um, B Mac, Brandon McMillan. So one of my, you know, we used to travel together. One of my best buddies that I've made, he lives in Florida. Um, I saw Miles Berghoff is Bill McDonald, long time FLW yeah. guy is, um, I don't know. I'm forgetting now, but I've, I've seen like f- several people posting about it the last few days that, yeah. that yeah. Are. I heard there's 160, like the last I heard was there's 169 people signed up for all nine opens. That could be an inflated number. Wow. It could be BS, but that's a mega number. That's over double of what I expected. Yeah, you only got to make the top ten, bud. Or nine. nine. Top yeah. Nine. Nah, no problem. Yeah, should be easy, <laughs> hey? Your worst finish is like 20th, so. Yeah, because I just uh, <laughs> went to the two easiest ones. <laughs> uh, hey, it, you know, it's, uh, yeah, you go fish, fish, do your thing, and you'll be you'll be good. Yeah, whatever. I, I mean, just having the chances is, is enough for me. So if it works out, it works out. If not, like Robertson says, you can go back to the same old bullshit you was doing. Yeah. And that's the attitude you got to have. I mean, you just got to go and like enjoy every minute and have fun. And, um, that's, it's kind of, you know, if you go to it, like, Oh, I have to get a check at this one or I'm, you know i'm toast like it's just takes the fun out of it and yeah. um you're yeah, not gonna that fish that carl can good. speak to that as well as anyone yeah Thanks. like his like, yeah for sure i don't know i mean it, like just being in the both of them like his fishing skills and like he, he can tie knots like fast and better than anyone i've ever been in the boat with like just yeah. little like that stuff's all like just he's got that all dialed in and i think you know, I think a lot of it for him maybe is that he just he, – he, I mean, he's qualified twice through the Open. So, yeah. I mean, I, like yeah. not many people have done that. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, it just – he didn't grow up bass fishing like like a lot of us or even the Japanese guys. Like at least they get to grow – they're coming over too. But, like, they, they grew up with a background bass fishing, and that's probably, you know – he he maybe has to, like, think about stuff a lot more when you – when you don't want to be thinking about your just you know what the next move is you want to just be able to kind of do it organically and do it like oh yeah, that, the wind's like, blowing over there like that kind of looks you know just and had a lot more riding on it when he was putting all the chips in the hat yeah for sure and i mean he's he's been like 
you know, way down and out and like just manage to like turn it around and get, get, you know, like every time he needs to. Yeah. So, um, no, it's pretty, pretty impressive, but, uh, but yeah, no, lots of, lots of people around here are pumped for you that you're going to do it. And, um, obviously like no better, you know, you deserve to, to you, you, you're the best around here and, um, you know, it's good, good to go, go give it a shot. I, I mean, it's I mean, just it's not, not the best around here, but, oh, but I mean, the last few years that you, yeah, like I don't, be, I, I, I've, I don't beat you very often in any of the tournaments around here. And I mean, not many people do. So uh, all I'm saying is I'm, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I'm not trying to blow up your, your ego yeah, or anything down, down there, just big dick swing into the <laughs> ramp. Like, uh, yeah, spurs. But on you, you've, you've like, you don't have anything to prove around here. And you don't have anything to prove going down there either, but it's it's uh, it's good to go and you know give it a shot. I've been lucky, like super lucky, and it's it's kind of like in anything you do, but you catch some breaks, um, which I have, and you 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 know it's uh, if you can make it to the elite series, it's like it, it can be a lot gets a lot a little a little bit easier to like ours. We have nine tournaments too, but. Are, we have three of them that are back to back. So just like for the travel part of it, it's much easier than you're doing nine and you got a, you know, a couple of weeks or a month in between all of them. It's just, it's, it's brutal for travel. Um, yeah. But, I mean, that's how it's supposed to be though. Right. That's the, that's the gauntlet. If you can yeah. get through that, you can get through anything as the theory. Yeah. But yeah, you're going to meet lots of, you know, you're going to make more good friends and, yeah, and meet I'm people at, and, like get to go to keep the podcast rolling you know could could get 190th in points and still uh have a bunch of beauties on here and probably gonna have a bunch of good stories after nine i think i'm gonna stay with uh leitner and and rasmussen are gonna be kind of the guys so if you're around brad for like any length of time you're gonna get some stories out of the deal i'll just yeah that that makes it a lot easier too if you got you know i've been lucky there too like just have had good buddies to roll with you know, ever almost since I started the first year, um, the first year or two kind of did stuff solo, mostly hotel rooms. And, and then, uh, my, I think my second year on the FLW tour started staying with Matt, Matt, Stefan, um, and, you know, a few other different guys along the way and, and then Brandon, but, uh, and then on the elite series, it's been, you know, the boys and, well, and that's where it helps too. Like I'll cut you off there. Um, you know, like when you first went down, you didn't know anyone at all. No. Where like I'm going down kind of third string, like, uh, you know, Br- I, I think Brian went down before any of us. Yeah. Uh, he made friends with Brandon and, and, you know, made some buddies on the, it was like the Costa series at the time. Um, you know, and then Gussie met Brandon and, and what, I mean, it was just, it was, what I'm saying is it was easy for me because you had already made the bridge between a lot of these guys, like there's no reason like Bider and Robertson should be jumping on here. And, you know, you, you bullshit with Robertson on the water. And it's just like that, that doesn't happen unless someone like you has already gone down and kind of uh, laid the foundation for the, the Canadian connection. So. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, but yeah, you, you, you're, you're going to be doing, you're going to do fine and go, yeah, just enjoy all the, you're going to, there's some places that are just, you hate it and it's like you're lost uh and then you just yeah you just gotta keep keep grinding and it's it just like the little simple things are what i've learned like my consistency's got a lot better the last few years and a lot of it's just like i used to carry like every bit of tackle that i owned with me and now i yeah. pretty much just like put put whatever i'm gonna take in my boat and like if we're going like at the end of this season, when we, we went to Oahe and then La, La Crosse, the Mississippi River, so completely different. I packed a bit of tackle in my truck to swap out, yeah. but like I pretty much just take put put tackle in my boat. And I mean, when we like when we first started going, I mean, I would have the whole back of my truck, every bit of tackle I owned in there, and yeah. um, I, I re, you know I just really try to like keep it fairly simple and like just getting to fish with some of these guys now that are that are you know that are really good that are the best like you just it, a lot of them it's not like secret lures and and uh it's just like make mindset, g- mindset and like don't make bad like make good casts like just like sim- pretty simple follow yeah. the general rules and uh 
you gave me a good line a while back. Uh, there's no way you'll remember, but you were talking about. Was uh, it the night of the surf and turf? I don't remember if it was no, that. No, <laughs> no, no, it's not, not because you were banged up, just because it was kind of like a passive line. Uh, I was talking about um, uh, Chad Adrians, who's, you know, yeah. he, not around anymore, really good angler, and, uh, and Caleb in Sturgeon Bay, and these two are the most dominant on the water. Yeah. uh around at the time and both really good guys and uh one thing he said uh that that has always stuck with me he probably told me 10 years ago uh you're like they don't waste a cast yeah, yeah. if they're casting at something it, like they're not just aimlessly floating around like just throwing their line out hoping for a bite like every cast is like the waypoint's oh, over there the trolling motor's going on 10 for 10 more feet till i get within range of it my bait's going on the like like yeah and it's, I mean, it's even easier now with forward facing sonar, but that's, you know, that's kind of something that just hasn't left the back of my head. That's yeah. a cool line. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's a crazy sport and the highs are high and the lows are brutal. Um, but like you, yeah, you just, a lot of it's just like try and keep things simple as, as simpler is better, you know, most of the time. And, um, I don't know you you know that you 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 do that already but uh but yeah no it's gonna be I think lots of people are excited to follow follow what you're doing and yeah hopefully that'll be a sideshow to whatever you got going on this year <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty sweet like it's pretty clear like guys are dropping out of the bass pro tour tour on the mlf to try to make the elites guys are dropping out of the flw like the invitationals I mean, it's the elites is where it's at. There's only 104 people there this year, and and you're one of their, them, and and not just surviving, like competing. So it's pretty freaking sweet I to have. That. Consider myself lucky every day, and I got in, you know, when when the big split happened. Um, Bassmaster plucked like 10 of us from FLW that, and I got included in that. Just you know, it was just good timing. I'd had a really good year in 2018, and. Uh, you know, I never had to go through like the open gauntlet. Um, and I, I really, every day, like I'm consider myself pretty lucky that I'm where I'm at and what I'm getting to do. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. And, um, there it's, it's not as glamorous as it looks. No. I mean, you know that, but yeah. like, just like the traveling and time away from home and the cost of everything. And, um, you know, I, and you need a, when you finally make it, you still don't like make a pile of money. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, and you rely on a lot of, on help from a lot of people and companies and sponsors and, um, you know, you, you really do. I really do. And, um, yeah. it's, uh, it's, yeah, you, it's like anything, you know, you, you still got to work hard and, um, I, I fish as you know, a lot and live for it, but it's, you know, this time of year it's, it's. I, I, you know, I want to be deer hunting a little bit and, you know, we'll, we'll be able to ice fish here fairly soon, but it's, you know, Sunday. there's sometimes you gotta, you're going on Sunday. Sunday? Yeah. 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 I'm going to go deer hunting tomorrow. Nice. I got a good deer hunt story while you're here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait. So I'm, I'm one of the, you know, I'm not a good deer hunter. I, I, the only reason I do it is because I like eating them. And there's always a very small window between when you put the boat away and when you can start ice fishing. Yeah. Some years it's longer than others. Um, so I, you know, shot a spiker, you know, a little bit here and there. And I was talking to Gussie one year, he was going pretty hard on the deer, on the deer, uh, baiting and everything a few years ago. And, uh, he's like yeah you can come and bait a couple stands with me and i was kind of just trying to learn the deal like learn the lay of the land it's a lot like bass fishing you know that yeah. it's there's a lot of pattern to it and everything so i was just kind of getting the training seminar in there and uh we sat one stand and there was a spiker and a big one like the big one just came through at night and i was like yeah i don't have a chance and i went out there and in my first uh two hours i shot it <laughs> 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 off it, sitting in his tree stand and it was, uh, it was a big beauty. Um, and I was like, well, damn, this is easy. So the next year, the next year I went and got some, like, you know, I got everything I needed and, and started to run my own show in a totally different area. And in between baiting spots, a nice one ran across the road, chasing a doe and stood, uh, 
30 meters off the road like yeah. and blasted him so i've got about four hours <laughs> into deer hunting yeah. in the last couple of years and it's been there's a couple on the wall <laughs> that yeah. should not be there well, so i'm going tomorrow and I'm, i i pretty much have four hours of my schedule carved out because i just feel like that's gonna happen no just it's lucky as shit Actually, after you get these little snowfalls they like to get on their feet you know after and get bumping around and i'm sure there's still a little bit of rod action happening but yeah. i uh you know like in the early mid 2000s i mean we were we had one of the best places to deer hunt in north america around lake of the woods like insane deer hunting and i didn't know a lot about it but i was into it a little bit and just getting done with school and everything like i i don't want to have to get a real job i want to fish and guide and and um had some friends that like through got fishing guiding that deer hunted all over the place were really into it that um they're like you got to guide for whitetails around here so i ended up just starting up my own little outfitting business not that many people were doing it at least not like you know at a high level like yeah some of these resorts would fill their camps and tell that you know like yeah just go up that road you'll see go to witch bay road like the you know go watch the power line and like there were so many deer like people would get them but um but i did that for like 10 or 12 years and that was my biggest money maker of the year i mean it was the hunting was really really good and like we looking back now it you know took it for granted how good it was um because it's it's we're in a tough spot now we've had a lot of bad winters and um, we're kind of right at the north end of the deer whitetail range, um, and it's it's yeah. it's it's tough now around here. But um, but yeah, it's it's it'll come back around again and, and be good. But I I had a lot of fun with it for a long time, and now I'm just like I'm just not that excited to go because I know it's kind of sucks. But if yeah. you go put your time in, like there's still some nice deer around, you can find one to hunt. But it's de- definitely not like uh, like it used to be. Yeah, that's a challenge. You can only do so many things, too. Yeah, it's it is what it is. So, I you know you just I just went on a trip for three weeks and have been playing catch up the last few days. And you know it's uh, I did I did you know you just kind of ignore everything when you when you're on the road, you know. So, yeah, take fin- it's uh, trying to wrap up like some of the sponsor stuff for next year. Uh, yeah, I already took them all. Yeah. While you were gone, yeah, I just came in and cut all your grass. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've been a few I've been getting no replies from, so. Yeah, I said Gussie moved to Australia for the <laughs> Barramundi tour. I said, I'll just fill in. Hey, if we had Barramundi over here, I probably wouldn't even fish for anything else. Like, they were so, they were that fun, like, oh, just man, going back crazy, to that. But. I'm so one-sided on the bass where I'm like, I don't want to even hear about anything but bass. Like, we're going to uh, uh, Cabo Wabo or whatever it is next month. We're all going on a big uh, trip for a wedding, and uh you know we'll, i'm sure we'll go saltwater fishing and yeah i'm sure it'll be fine and everything but like nothing excites me like a bass tournament so to hear you say that and i'm sure you are the same way but to hear you say that the that you'd only ever fish for those things that's a pretty big testament yeah no i uh it was fun um like i said it was just like i'll be definitely going back to do it again and it was just like the fishing was really fun and then yeah just like I, the like the guys were cool um and just the whole experience was was top notch like no complaints they have these uh, mud crabs over there, so they're like a big, big crab, like giant. Yeah. And uh, one of the guys somehow had went and caught some, like while we were staying all together at this place. And after that all nighter event, then at lunch that day, he cooked. Up, he had eight of them that he cooked up and like gave Shelbs and I a big plate, like with you know all the fixins around, and it was like so good. And this stuff's like one hundred and twenty-five dollar a plate like if you went to a restaurant yeah. to get it it's kind of rare but like it's just like the best um crab that you've ever had it was so good like big dogs kind of like lobstery a little bit but, yeah, but mud crab man that crab needs a better name if it's that good yeah no. they probably don't put that on the menus hey no nah, that's what they call that's what they no nah, that's what they call them huh we yeah. should get that guy on think yeah. he'd do it probably you got any beauties over there that like would jump on because like I, uh, well, like the, Benny and Pete and Tommy, like the young guy, like these three guys, we and we probably like need to get on because okay. they'd be they'd be, yeah, yeah, hilarious. Yes. I like that one. The uh, the only reason I go on TikTok ever is that there's an Australian guy that watches people like cook stuff and he just chirps the hell out of them and it makes me laugh so much. So 
Yeah, well. I definitely can. I, I get the sense of humor, and we should rile them up. Yeah, no, if we get, like, Pete and Benny, like, there's going to be some bad language probably. Yeah, probably but, uh, yeah, we'll give, like, the warning, like, don't let your kids listen to <laughs> okay. it. Like, don't, pu- don't put it on in the car on the way to hockey. Like, listen yeah. to this when you're, you know, on your way to deer camp or if you're out like, fishing. Interviewed these guys after they won the last tournament. Like, Steve's like, so what did you think of the wind? And they're like, that was pretty like, <laughs> yeah it, right on the mic oh yeah right on the yeah. mic. yeah like it no was, kidding yeah it was uh, it was hilarious it was no awesome. one cares though hey no, no one cares like they drop the c word like it's uh like it's nothing part of the language yeah cool i remember carl on uh, mercer's podcast I was like yeah i used to say it all the time here and like people would give me funny looks <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um uh, but yeah no like the the best the be- there yeah they were i really enjoyed everyone's company and uh yeah, it was it was a good time, but yeah, we should line up have an Australian um, event here for one of the episodes. Yeah, 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 we'll have Australian night for sure, especially <laughs> like in the middle of winter when we're sick of talking about ice fishing, and we'll get some beauties on there. It'll be like the middle of the summer there, and yeah, 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 sweet bud. Well, uh, thanks a lot, man, for jumping on. Um, it was kind of an impromptu thing. Like I said, I was talking to you on the phone, and you had all these good stories. So getting big now, so like you're gonna have you got to keep a semi consist some some kind of consistency going with these so you're gonna you know you just gotta find some some easy easy targets here and there right yeah, right. yeah ashley asked me tonight when she could come on i was like you're <laughs> you're on the back burner from for like when we're really hurting for a sunday um yeah yeah i mean we've been trying to drop them on sundays but you know how scheduling works and everything goes like that but and uh to say i'm getting big it's a pretty small niche but so <laughs> big is a relative term um i look forward to when they come out and um i haven't get got caught up i listened to the to the one you did with um with uh dom this morning just while i was well at lunchtime when i woke up today oh yeah he was a nervous wreck for the first yeah time. i could tell i could tell <laughs> but he opened it up and it ended up being good but <laughs> nice nice all right well uh Oh yeah, we did like a giveaway on the last one. I gotta, I'll drop that in the uh, in the description of who won that. I'll let you know. We got some new color smeltinators. Yeah, that's good. morning glory. That's called. That's an absolute beauty. Uh, you'll be the first person with those. Bunch of rip and wrap, some ice fishing stuff, some Z-Man stuff. Um, and again, if you want uh, want to get your hands on some BT fishing stuff, I really think that Gussie is going to have a good chance at the Classic this year. Uh, it's you know where he's held his blue trophy before it's a little bit later in the year and he won it on the smeltinator jig back there so if you want any smeltinator jigs if he wins it on the smeltinator jig this year you're not going to get one like you won't there they'll be unavailable that's what happened last time we got a good stock now a couple pallets but hop on there use promo code get the net on btfishing.com grab you some of those smeltinator underspins maribus the elite st- series maribus are back in stock B jigs, all that Thank good God. stuff. If one more elite guy asks me for my Maribus, yeah. I'm gonna lose my mind. Yeah, I know. Tell their local tackle store to reach out to us, and we'll yeah. uh, we'll stock them up. Gussie's, you know, his yeah. hands are already like turning black yeah, on the no, tips by now from yeah. tying those little hair jigs. And Jobs doesn't even want me to touch her arms ever because my hands are so roughed up and yeah. beat up. Yeah, yeah. feathers all over the house. Yeah. Give the guy a damn break. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening. Like, subscribe. All that stuff. We had to buy a new mic just to get Gussie in here. Uh, You don't get that kind of gear without uh, support and subscribing on your end. So free little click. Drop her down there. Thanks again. We'll see you next week.